Hey guys. I don't see anybody yet, but I'm sure you're gonna come flooding in. Oh, there you are. <laughs> How is everybody tonight? I am going to go on my laptop really quick and just make sure I can see your comments. We're gonna give it quite a few minutes here for everyone to find me. Okay, now I see you here. Awesome. So as you are coming on, feel free to say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. We have so many people coming in, I can't read you fast enough. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Awesome. I got my tea here. I am ready to paint. So as everybody is coming on, um, I will keep saying this, but please don't click any links. I don't know if I'm going to get spammed tonight. I only saw one spammer so far, which is really good for this busy of an event. Usually they're going crazy on my page. So um, just don't click any links, please. Um, this is a free event. If you're watching me, there's no need to click any links. Uh, unless I personally tell you I'm going to post and pin one tonight, then please don't click any. I see lots of people still coming in. Awesome. I see some people from Manitoba, Michigan, Washington State. Darla, if you're looking for a paint book like mine, um, I get mine on Amazon. So um, I'm in Canada, but they're about uh, $16 Canadian on Amazon. Mine is an 11 by 14 Canson brand. So um, that's where I get mine, but you can also get them at Walmart, I've heard. I just haven't ventured out into the city yet to get one because of COVID. I've been trying to stay relatively safe, so I do a lot of online shopping right now just to get all my supplies in, but you can get one on Amazon. And I still see people coming in, so we'll just give it some more time for everyone to find me. I am actually still a couple minutes early, so I usually like to give people about 10 minutes after, 10, 15 minutes after the start time, just because with everybody trying to find my page and everything happening all at once, I like to make sure that everybody is here. I see Amesburg, that's really close to me, really close. Salt Lake, Chicago, um, Iowa. So what I will do is I will give it a few more minutes and then I will go over our supply list before we start. Um, just so everybody has a chance to make sure they were able to get everything. Um, like I always say, don't worry about colors. Don't get stuck on them. You can paint this really whatever color you would like. Um, if you were not able to get the specific red, you can have any shade that you would like. So there's no specifics for tonight. Um, we're painting to have fun and um, we don't have to worry about being too particular. <laughs> June says, this is my first time. Can't wait and thank you uh, for this from New York. Awesome. And I still see people coming in, so just sit back, enjoy your drink. What's everybody's drink of, of choice tonight? 
If you've been painting with me, it's no shock I'm drinking tea. <laughs> I'm predictable and boring. <laughs> but it's my, uh, it's my go-to drink when I'm painting. The combination of painting and drinking tea for me is just like um, the, the calmest thing I could possibly do. So <laughs> I've got my Christmas cup here tonight. It's backwards to you because I don't have the right flip phone. But um, I figured since we're doing our first Christmas painting, I'll get out my Christmas cups. I am drinking chai tea. That's one of my favorites. We've got some Dr. Peppy, oh, Dr. Pepper with crunchy ice. Raspberry lemonade. I'm so excited. I see there's families joining me. So if you're painting with your kids, that's awesome. Um, actually, this Sunday, I have a parent in me paint day too at uh, 12 Eastern time. So it will be um, a turkey for Thanksgiving. And we'll be painting that. Sorry, I'm just trying to see comments as I go here. So yeah, there'll be a Thanksgiving turkey for the American Thanksgiving. Um, ours in Canada already passed, but um, I thought we could have fun painting a turkey and celebrate the American Thanksgiving as well. So that'll be this Sunday at 12 noon Eastern time. And people are still commenting and coming in. Um, while we're waiting, I'll show you quickly what we're going to do Sunday if you guys want to join. It's a parent in me paint day. If I can find it here, I think I'm going the wrong way. Maybe not. There it is. So we'll be painting this on Sunday. My four-year-old daughter will be joining. Um, she loves to do these parent and me paint days. So it'll be me and her. And we'll be painting something like this. Don't like I said. Don't get too hooked on these colors either. Really, this is a fun painting, and they could it could really be any color. So we'll be doing that. But under my events, you'll see a supply list there as well. Okay, so I still see people coming in. We'll just be patient for everybody that's coming in. This says up here there will be a replay. So I know it's backwards to you, but I guess I should have kind of figured out how to write it backwards and then it would have been the right way. <laughs> but uh, there will be a replay just because I know this is a very popular question. Um, there will be a replay under videos on my page. Also, I have a YouTube channel, which is the same name, Artisticris. If you want to subscribe to that, I put all my free paintings in there. So you can go right into YouTube then and just view them. Like, it's a lot easier just to see them all. So they will be in there. This one won't be on YouTube until probably the weekend or maybe Monday. Um, but it will be on Facebook immediately after this paint night is done. So if you can't wait and you really want to do it and it's not up on YouTube yet, just hop on to Artistic Chris under videos and you'll see it there. Yes, my painting book is just paper, but it's multimedia paper, so it doesn't leak through. So you can paint um, watercolor or acrylics. It just looks like that. And when you paint, it doesn't go through to the other side. So um, it's called a multimedia pad. Okay, so we'll still give it about five minutes and then I will um, show the supply list for tonight. 
Cindy says I just ordered that pad today. Awesome. You're gonna love it. It's it's um it's just so nice to have everything combined. It's almost like you have a little art portfolio. And what I like best about it is you can always go. There's 60 pages. So say you uh, do a paint night a month or a couple a month, over that length of time, um you will see such an improvement in your painting if you continue on. So you can always look back at your very first painting and then look at the last page and see, wow, practice does make perfect. Because <laughs> like I always say, it's art is a skill. It's not, you didn't, you weren't born and you can just do it. Um, it's a skill like anything else. So the more you practice, the better you will get. Um, I'm self-taught. I didn't go to school for art. I didn't even know I liked art until about maybe 11 or 12 years ago. And then I just picked up a paintbrush and I practiced and practiced. And then it became such a passion that I thought I'd want to share it with others. And it seems to be going well as everybody's on here waiting to paint with me. So <laughs> very exciting. I have classes weekly, so every single week I have a class except for next week because I took a little break just because my husband's on a vacation, So I, but normally I have classes every week. Um, usually two are free a month and then two are paid. Um, the paid ones are always $10 and you get lifetime access. Um, you can paint it as many times as you want and it's ten dollars per household so if you want to invite your friends over and you want to paint all for ten dollars it's something to do that is affordable and fun especially in these times and um yeah so i just i like to make it cheaper everybody can still afford to have fun and paint so two paid ones a month two free ones All right, so I still see people coming in. I think it's slowing down a little bit. Yes, and yes, $10 per household. And like I said, you can have a group of friends over. If you have your little bubbles and you wanna have one group of friends over and paint one night, you can have another group of friends over another night and still paint for that same $10 because once you have access to the private Facebook group, um, you can view it as many times as you'd like. So you really, it's unlimited. Um, the only thing I ask is just not to give the link out. Uh, if you're not viewing from the same house, then just pay the extra 10, but um, Normally, I haven't really come across that. Most people just invite friends over and then paint together. Yes, people are saying, let's get stroking. I promise we are going to paint very, very soon. I just want to make sure everybody's in. Um, and I will go over the supply list right now, and then we will get started. Okay, so to start, we have something to paint on. So whether you have canvas um, or multimedia paper or even a piece of wood is fine. Um, and then just a paper plate, we are, we are going to put our paints on. I have some napkins here to clean my brushes with. And then a cup of water to rinse my brushes. And then we have, um, the mine is a three quarter inch flat brush. I did say half inch in the description, which is fine too. Um, my daughter, I think stole my half inch and I can't find it. So <laughs> I'm using my three quarter, but either or is fine for tonight. And then we have a small flat brush here and a detailed brush. This is a size four. You could go four or smaller. Um, it'll work perfect. And then we have very limited paint colors tonight, which is kind of cool. <laughs> um, I think the less actually the better because then everyone can join in and they don't have to go and spend a crazy amount of money shopping around. So, um, we have white here and black and then some orange. If you don't have orange, you could just do yellow and red. Um, I have some pine green and some Tuscan red. Like I said, don't mind the names. You can pick any, any shade you want. 
Um, and I do have different ar acrylic color, um, graining here. So if you have different ones and you want to mix them, I do it all the time. Some are just a little bit thicker than others. So those are our colors for tonight. And my paper is still white. We are going to paint it black together. If you went ahead and you bought a black canvas or you pre-painted it, no problem. Just, um, we'll just relax through that process and then we'll get to the snowman after. So once I move my head, I do have here, there will be a replay. Um, just because I know that's a very popular question, but okay. So this is how it's going to work. If you haven't painted with me before, um, uh, my name is Crystal Anger and I started Artista Chris, um, actually November two years ago. So roughly two years, uh, I used to paint in person, but since COVID I decided to come online and, um, do this virtually. Uh, it was a, it was a big hit in person. So I figured online, especially since everybody is stuck inside, it would be great to come together. Um, my goal for tonight would be for you to be in the present moment, to um, not be thinking of the past or the future, and just be here enjoying tonight, and just gaining confidence in your art. We are all going to be at different levels, so um, if you're just picking up a brush for the first time tonight, or you are an experienced painter, I try to meet a middle line. So. Um, I'm not going to go super fast, so if you do get done ahead of time, just enjoy that you have nothing to do <laughs> and, um, and, and just sit back and relax. Uh, and then how it works is as I do each step, I will just ask for a thumbs up or um, likes or hearts just to let me know that you are ready for the next step. When I see a majority of that pop up, then I'll move on. Um, I don't like to leave anyone too far behind um, because this isn't supposed to be a rush painting. It's supposed to be a night of relaxation. So um, also, if for some odd reason you do fall very far behind, I will be reposting the replay immediately after and you can just click on that and then go right to where I, you left off and just go at your own pace. So anyways, so if we are all ready to get started tonight. Let me see thumbs up and likes and I will get started. Okay, so I'm seeing lots of thumbs up. This event will be a roughly two hours, give or take. Okay, so what we're going to start is if you haven't, if you just have a white canvas, we're going to start by painting it black so we can get um, some black on our plates. And we're going to start with using our big, uh, biggest brush that we have. So this one is, this one's three quarter inch, but whatever biggest one you have there, I did put half inch in the supply list. Either or will work perfectly fine. And we're just going to take, and we're just going to get a good amount on our brush. Because we're just painting a solid black background, it doesn't have to be too particular. Um, we're just going to go in and just go, I'm just going to go side to side. So side to side using both sides of the brush. just back and forth. Um, when you paint a background, naturally you'll push down on your brush one way. And every time you push down on your brush one way, all that paint is coming through the other side of your brush. So I'm going to flip it and just naturally go and keep going back and forth and flipping my brush. That way I'm evenly distributing the paint and I'm not getting any 
big lines of paint left. This one's a pretty easy background though because it's solid. We're not blending really any colors or anything like that. So We're just going to keep going here. Depending on what size canvas you're using, this is an 11 by 14. You might be ahead of me or a little bit behind me if you're using a little bit of a bigger one or smaller one. And when you, as you finish up, we're going to need the background dry. So if you did have a blow dryer um, that was listed in the supplies there, you can go ahead and blow dry it if you're done ahead of time. Just because when we are layering, we want the layers to be dry. Because if they're wet, then they're just going to blend together and we're not going to get that pop of color on top. So we want to make sure it, this is very dry before we start anything else. If you don't have a blow dryer, even acrylic paint dries fast, you can step outside quickly and just kind of <laughs> run through the night <laughs> with it over your head. Your neighbors will think you're crazy. <laughs> Also, another thing is if you um, want to see when I go live and you want to be able to find my videos faster when I go live, there is a little bell notification at the top. Um, if you just hit the bell, then every time I go live, you, it'll give you a notification. So if you want to follow um, more of my tutorials as I keep going, then that would be the best way to be able to see when I go live is just hitting that little bell. If I'm not sure exactly where it is when you're on um, a phone, but on if you're on a laptop or computer and you're in full screen, it's just at the top. You'll see it at the very top. So right now we are just painting a solid black background and I'm gonna hit this with the blow dryer in one second. Yeah, if anybody knows where it is on the phone, just put in the comments. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where it shows up on your phone because I can't see because it's my actual live. So I don't know. And you can go ahead and clean your brush out when you're done. Okay, so we have on the phone, it's at the top right in the three dots. So I guess if you hit three dots at the top of your phone, you're going to see the bell. Angie says it has a follow button on hers. Cool. I think everybody's equipment is different. Still trying to figure out my own, jeez. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna give this a quick blow dry. 
When you're done, do the same, and then we'll give it a couple minutes for everyone to catch up and make sure everyone's on the same page. So we'll just give everyone a couple minutes to catch up there. Yeah, my sign just says there will be a replay. I know it's backwards. Um, this is also, I have, next time I get, I didn't know when I started doing these online that there was a phone that actually flips the image so that it's not like a mirror image. <laughs> um, so my next phone I get, I definitely will look into that. But um, like right now, this snowman for me is on the right side of my page. But I know to everybody, it looks like it's on the left. So when you're painting with me tonight, just paint it on whatever side it looks like it's on. I don't want it to get too confusing where um, you're trying to figure out distance and everything from the opposite side. So mine's on the right side. The only difference will be your trees will be here and then your snowman's gonna be here. So at least I don't have any words on this painting. <laughs> I'll go with that. Oh, that's so sweet. Aparna, <laughs> my biggest fan, your daughter. Your biggest fan, my daughter. Yes, she's the sweetest little girl. <laughs> I'm glad she's excited to try the replay. Tell her I said hi. Yeah, I can't, I can't flip my phone. Sorry, everyone. Followed on me. All right, so um, if everybody is finding that their canvases are dry, just let me know in the comments. I'm getting constant thumbs up and hearts, so I'm not sure how I'm gonna read if um, that's what you're hearting me for. But um, if and if you want to put like a thumbs up in the comments, then I'll be able to see it better. Yeah, my phone doesn't support the mirror image setting I tried. It just, it doesn't offer it. There's like one little symbol that's missing and that's the one that flips it. The canvas is 14 high and 11 wide.
So on YouTube, it's under Artisticris, spelled the same as, as Facebook. I'll just move it down a little bit there so you can see. Okay, I'm starting to get some ready to go. So we will move on here. Okay, so what we're gonna work on first is we're gonna work on the white trees in the background and just this little white hill. So we're gonna put some white on our plate. So right now I just have that white on there. So that's the only thing that's going on our plates right now. And we're still gonna stick with this, with your flat brush, your bigger flat brush. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we are just going to start with kind of a line of where we want our snow. So I'm going to move this a bit closer so you can see better. There we go. And I'm going to move this down here. And you'll see here, this snow is about halfway through our page. So we're just going to know that um, we're going to be starting that line about halfway through our page there. And we're going to have our flat, bigger brush. And I'm just going to kind of move the bristles up so that the edge of this here is pretty flat. We don't want really all the bristles everywhere. We want to get a nice straight line. So if you can see that there. Okay. And we're just going to take and put the end of our brush in there so it's not going to be too much and we're just going to tap it off a little bit. We're going to go about halfway here and we're just going to draw a line. Um, as you see the snowman, there's no snow coming out over here so we don't have to go too crazy, just about halfway and across. So we'll just kind of go halfway down here and just draw a little line just like that just to start. Hi, Jackie. Nice to see you too. And what we're going to do is we're just going to move kind of sideways just along just to kind of thicken it up. I'm just kind of moving sideways and kind of going up and down a little bit. So we're going to make we're going to work up first and then we'll work down here. So I'm just kind of building a little bit of snow up here just by tapping and kind of moving sideways along here. So it's just going to look like that. It's just kind of looking like a little mound right now. And I'm just kind of building up just little taps. Just along. I have my brush a little bit on an angle. So it's not completely straight like this. Not completely straight like that. I have it a little bit on an angle like this when I'm tapping. So I have it, I have it all touching, but the one corner is going to be touching a little bit more. And what that's going to do is just give us those little hills up a little higher on the corner. Because if we have it completely flat like this, we're just going to get a continual straight line. And we want to have a little bit of an angle. So is everybody able to see that okay? 
from my camera, it looks like the whole thing is in there. Is everyone good? I see a couple people saying they can't see it. Perfect. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to leave that small amount of paint on our brush and we don't want to add any more. We want to be able to see the bristles through it there. I know it's kind of hard to see with the glare, but you can see my bristles at the top here. And what I'm going to do to achieve kind of like the hit and miss look here is I'm going to slowly move back and forth. Um, but there's going to be such little paint on my brush that it's not going to be able to leave as thick of a section as this. So as I go along here, I'm just going to just lightly, lightly kind of just move down. And you'll see you're going to get that hit and miss kind of look there. And that's what we're going for. And I have my, my paintbrush is on about a 45 degree angle while I'm doing that. So I'm not completely like this. I'm not completely flat. I'm at about a 45 degree angle and it's just hitting and missing little spots there. You see as I move it closer there. Okay, so all we've done so far is we've just worked on this little tiny hill and we'll cut we're gonna come back we're gonna build up a little more on the tops just so the tops of the hill kind of looks like a little bit fluffy um, with fluffy snow and then it kind of gives it the image like that's the main part of the hill and as you move closer this is kind of getting you know a little bit more separated so well we're gonna leave that for now though um, and just leave it like that and we're gonna work on this hill down here So we're basically going to do this the same exact way. We're still using our big brush and we're still using white. And we're just tapping it off each time that we dunk our brush. Um, we don't want to, we want to be able to control where the paint's going. And if we have too much, we won't be able to. So I tap it in and then I just lightly tap it off here. Okay. So now we're moving down to this one. Um, and what we're going to do first is we're just going to distinguish a line where we want the base of our snow to go. So if you'll see here, we have, I like to divide it into three. I have my main line, then I have my hill, and then I have the leftovers. So we're just distinguishing our main line right now. Um, and from the bottom, I would say it's about a couple inches up. You're not going to make a mistake if you are a little bit more or a little bit less. That is just, that's just a, a ballpark. So go a couple inches up and we're just going to draw that line like we did this one. Our brush is on a 90 degree angle now. And we're just going across just lightly. And you can see here, it doesn't go all the way. So we're not touching both sides. We're just kind of going almost all the way. What's great about starting with a baseline is you can move it. If you feel like this baseline is a little bit too low, then you can just put a little bit less down here and a little bit more up here. So that's just where we want to start. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of distinguish how high we want our hill to go. So um, we're just going to take and just kind of move in a little bit and just do a little hill. Nothing too crazy. I'd say the top part 
um, is maybe an inch high, but you can always adjust as we go. So let's, let's start smaller first and then we can move up to it being bigger. So I'm just going to take still on a 90 degree angle here, just like that. And I'm just going to outline just kind of where I would want my hill to be. Like I said, this is just rough. And just kind of bring it down here. And we just can go along just side to side and fill that in. So for right now, we're just doing a side to side motion. And I'm still using it at a 90 degree angle. With a flat brush, what's cool is we can fill our spaces quick or we can do detailed work with flat brushes. I could be going side to side like this, like we did the background and filling it in quickly, or I can be using it on the skinny part and I can kind of control my brush better when I'm doing that. So I'm just going back and forth and kind of filling that in. And if you run out of paint, grab a little more. Just don't forget to dab some off so that you're not getting too crazy with the, the thickness. It's important with acrylics to layer thin layers on and have many than to just put a big clump. So right now we just have that line and a simple little hill. So we're just filling that hill in, just kind of moving back and forth. As you can see here in the original, there's really no clean lines in the snow. So don't get too particular about if this line is out of, if it's not straight enough, nothing like that, because we're gonna be working some of this in here too. And we're just gonna take and just pat our brushes so that there's a very small amount again. And we're just gonna do the same thing we did here, just kind of back and forth below this line. So kind of just hitting and missing. And you can bring some, some out a little bit and then bring some in as you go down and then back out. And you're just, you're pressing very lightly. If you press too hard, you're going to get too much paint. Yeah, we can kind of just go side to side and kind of just fill in some extra spots here. I don't know what's going on in the comments because I'm too busy painting, but people look angry. <laughs> Honestly, there's no right or wrong here today, guys. Just, we're here to have fun. I'm not a fine artist. There's many artists that are way better than me. Um, I'm here for fun. I'm here just to give everyone a good night. Um, so don't take it too seriously. I, I'm not really sure why people are upset because I, I can't read them fast enough while I paint. But if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free just to private message me after and I can explain something better to you if you can um, figure something out or see something properly. Um, but let's just have fun for tonight. Okay, 
So, so far what we have is just kind of like a hill that looks like there's lines through it. We kind of want to make it look like there's snow layered on there. So we're still sticking with our same brush in the white and we're just going to do what we did up here. So we're just going to kind of come into the area that we already did white on and we're just going to tap kind of on an angle so that our hill at the top is not just even. We want it to be, look like snow, you know, when snow falls. Just kind of tap here and there. And just remember, your painting is not going to look exactly like mine. Um, nobody's painting. I see that there is 2,700 people watching right now. And I can guarantee all 2,700 are going to look different. Um, we all think different. We all do things differently. So the goal is not to look exactly like mine. Um, I just give you the base of what to do and then you take it from there. Like I said, don't be hard on yourself if it doesn't look exact. My painting here probably won't even look exactly like this one because it's freehand. So and we're just tapping up and down. That's all I'm doing. I have a very light amount of paint. Um, and you can see here, it's just creating um, kind of an, an uneven edge like snow would fall. Most of the top of this is going to be covered with our snowman anyways, so we don't have to be too particular about it. So I'll just give everyone a couple minutes just to get their hill how they would like it. Lee says, her seven-year-old daughter says we are all doing a good job. You are absolutely right. We all are. If you find that your black wasn't dry enough, um, just give it time, give the white time to dry or blow dry it a bit more and just go back over with white and it will cover. As soon as it's dry, it's going to cover a lot better than if it's wet on wet. That's when you're going to get that blending. Um, so just take the time to blow dry it and then um, that won't happen anymore. Okay. So we're just gonna go back to our little hill up here that we have or our little landscape and I'm just gonna take still the same brush and I'm just going to go on the edge of the top and just kind of tap lightly just to make it look like the snow is a little bit heavier up there. Pam says, I think this would make a cute Christmas card too. You're absolutely right, it would. Okay, so when we're done that, we can clean off our white, or the white off our brush, because we will be done with that for now.
Christine says, rip my kid covered in black paint. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so we're just placing this side after it's clean. We'll come back to it in a little bit. And what we're going to do next is we're going to work on these trees in the back. So um, we can get out our smaller flathead brush for that. We're actually going to use this one and this one, but uh, we'll start with this for now. Thank you, Jackie. I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. So this is what we're working with next, and we're still gonna be working with white paint. Chrissy says, my cat Bink Binks is watching me. I have my, my beagle on the bed watching me right now, so he's sound asleep. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take um, this brush and we're gonna dunk it in our water. We just want to dunk it in the water, get it a little damp, and we're going to pat it off, and then we're going to do the same thing with the bristles. We're just going to bring them all as close together as possible and as skinny so that we can make those tree trunks. So you'll see there, I got it pretty skinny there. I'm using acrylic paint. Um, this one here is folk art. This one is a little bit of a better brand than uh, the acrylic here. Acrylic, I guess it's called. This is Dollar Tree. This one I got from Michaels. Um, they kind of just go up in, this one just has a little bit of a thicker consistency. But I like, I mix them all up and as long as you're sticking with um, the same type of paint, then the brand isn't as important. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to take... Um, and go straight down into the white paint and just tap it in there and then to tap it off again. So you're just going to have a little bit there like that. And we're going, going to be working on um, these two trees right here first. We're going to leave this little guy because he is going to be used with the finer brush. So we're going to be working on these ones. And what we're going to do is... The bottom is going to be thicker than the top naturally on a tree. So we're going to use this brush two different ways. We're going to start, um, I'll, I'll do one now and then I'll move it closer so you can see it um, closer up. So we're going to start with our paintbrush completely flat like that. And as we move up, we're going to give it a quick turn so that it is on the flat or the skinny side. So I'm just going up like this. And as I move up, I'm slowly turning my brush and you'll see it goes from thicker to thinner. So I will do the next one closer so you can see. Okay, so right beside it. And I'm sorry because I'm left-handed, it's hard to see, but I'm going to show you here. So I'm completely flat there. And then I start like that, and as I move up, I slowly turn my brush sideways so that it's the skinny way. And then it makes, it changes the, the width of it. I'm just gonna go over that quickly just because I couldn't really see what I was doing there. And I'm gonna take this one up a little bit higher Trees are not generally the same exact height. So take that one up a little bit higher. And I'm just going to do one more over here a bit with the same brush. And we're just bringing it, I'm making this one a little tinier. So just bring it about halfway up.
Yes, I did not have the back prepped black. I painted it with everybody if you didn't start from the beginning. Um, I wanted to do it all from the beginning just so everybody knew exactly how I painted from beginning to end in case you wanted to recreate it again. Um, some people did go ahead and buy a black canvas or they pre-painted it ahead of time before the tutorial, which I told everyone was completely fine. Um, some people are painting with families of, of four and five and um, they don't have enough blow dryers. So if you did it ahead of time, that's great. Um, if you didn't, I did show you from the beginning um, what I did. So you have the option there. So I am going to wash off my brush now because I'm done using this one. Yeah, you could use black construction paper. The only thing is when you paint with construction paper, it might become wavy just from the moisture. That's the only thing. But you could like if you're if you that's all you have, you could definitely do it. Okay, so we're going to move on to having this uh, detailed brush now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just put the very tip in the paint. I'm not going to cover the whole thing. So just the tip is going to go into the paint there. And I'm going to work on these two smaller uh, initial branches here, like the trunks. So I'm just going to come up. Uh, I like to start with a straight line. You can always thicken the base afterwards, but just a nice straight line or not straight, sorry, thin line um, is a good way to start. So I'm just going to not worry about it being straight at all and just come up. So just a nice thin line. And what I like to do is when you're doing lines, I like to have my finger down on my my surface. Whenever I'm doing detailed work, a part of my hand or my finger is always on what I'm working on and I'm just working with my fingers because um, if I have my arm up like this, I naturally am gonna start to shake. I'm not gonna be able to get as much control as I'd like. So as soon as you put all the weight of your arm on that there, and you're only working with your fingers, you just have the weight of your fingers to work with and it's a lot easier. So I'm going up like that and I'm just gonna take and ex expand the trunk a bit at the bottom just to make it a little bit thicker. And then I'll meet back there just, just like that. Just so it's a tiny bit thicker. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing um, over here in between these two, just a little baby one right there. You see him He's just hanging out between the big ones. <laughs> and there's no right or wrong. Like I said, if you want to extend this across the back, um, if you want trees coming out this side, that's fine. Um, create it, make it your own, have fun with it. I always do the tutorial exactly like my picture in case anybody does want it to look relatively the same. Um, but there's no rules. So go crazy, put trees everywhere, wherever you'd like. And what we're going to do off of these ones now is these little tiny branches. So we can decide where they are going to go. We're not going to worry so much about the thickness from the base to the tip right now. We're just going to draw them or paint them on and then we can make them thicker at the tips after or at sorry at the base. So we're just going to do little tiny branches coming off. Um, wherever you want. It doesn't have to be exactly the same here. And as you will see, my hand is always going to be down on there when I'm doing this, just so that I have more control. And my branches are not completely straight, just because they're not straight in real life. 
And I'm just going to keep building off of those ones with just tiny ones. How you're achieving this is not too much paint and little hand pressure. You don't want to have too much hand pressure or your lines are going to be really thick. And we're just going to keep doing that with all of these here. And your branches can crisscross over each other too. They don't have to stay separate. You can have a little crisscross pattern. So this live should go till around 10 o'clock, I would say. So probably another hour by the time we do the snowman. Give or take a little bit. Everyone seems to be painting pretty fast tonight, so. I always kind of just go by everyone watching. Okay, so we have our background trees there. And what I was talking about is if you want to, um, depending on how you put your branches out, you can always go at the base of the branch and just kind of thicken it a little bit so it looks thicker at the base than it does coming out, just so it looks a little more realistic. But that's optional. If yours already are doing that, then don't worry about it. Yes, the video will be posted right after the live is done, so you can access it tonight. I think the times that are listed, I think what happens is my event was at 8 p.m. Eastern. What Facebook does is I think they put the time that you're going to view it and the time that I say it is. So if it's at 8 p.m. Eastern um, and you're in central time, let's say, then it's going to post that it's at 7. 
So it's automatically converting it for you, but it's still posting when I say it is too. So I can see how that can be confusing, but I don't think I can control that because Facebook automatically does that. So um, I always put EST after my time, so you know it's Eastern time. Uh, so then you can either convert it yourself, or if you are seeing a different time, most likely it uh, Facebook has converted it to your time zone for you, so you don't have to do it. So that's what that means. Um, I would never post two different times just because that wouldn't I just wouldn't do that. So it's got to be Facebook converting your time zone for you. Pam, I am a self-taught artist. I've been painting about 12 years with acrylics. That's why I always say I'm a fun artist, not a fine artist, because sometimes if I explain something, it might not be the same way that somebody who went to university for art would explain it. It's the simplest way that I learned myself. And so that's why um, I always explain at the beginning, I am just a fun artist. I am not a fine artist. <laughs> Okay, so if everybody's um, ready to move on to the snowman, if you have, if your trees are still really wet, give them um, a blow dry, just because we don't want to smear the, the snowman's going to be about here, so. Yeah, we're going to meet somewhere in the middle. Some people are telling me, can we please move a bit faster? Some people are telling me, wait, please. So if you are finished, just enjoy your time. Um, I know right now it's it's a very busy time in life with everything that's happening. So this is our time just to sit back and take a deep breath. Um, if you're ready and it's moving too slow, I apologize. But I always like to make sure nobody is rushing incredibly fast either. So we're going to move on to our snowman. Um, and it's pretty, the first steps are pretty um, basic. So if you're still kind of just blow drying or I will go over it again for you. But we're going to take, for the bottom half, we're going to take our big brush here. And we're still going to stick with our white. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make the bottom of the body. So for him, he's a bit oval. He's not um, too round. So what we're going to do is just start with an outline. And we're just going to take and just put a little bit of paint on the brush and just kind of dunk it off because we just want to make an oval to start. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this kind of like we would a pencil and we're just going to go on uh, the skinny part and we're just going to make a small oval. Like I said before, you can always start smaller and then expand out. I would start smaller personally because you can't really take away once you have it there. But the first um, oval is going to be just to the really the base of where this starts and it's going to go down into the snow. You're not going to see this yet, but we're going to highlight it after. So we're just going to take and just gently just make a little oval. And just go right around like that. You're gonna have this little oval body here. And we're not going to worry too much about the connection because there's going to be this scarf here. So right now we're just doing that oval shape and we can fill it in. 
we'll just take our brush here, same size brush, and just fill it in there. I like to always move with the shape of what I'm working with, just so the natural uh, texture of the paint goes with the shape. So I'm what I mean by that is I have an oval here. So naturally, this is going to curve this way. I like to keep it curved that way. And then this way, it's going to curve this way, right? I'm not just painting straight up and down. And then as I get to the middle, then I can go straight up and down. And he looks like he's leaning a little bit. I'm going to bring him out. And this is what I mean by you can fix it a bit. So now that I see how he's leaning, I'm just going to bring him a bit out here. I'm using the big brush here. So your biggest, I have the three quarter inch. Um, you'll probably have a half inch because that what was that is what was in the supply list. No, so this is we'll be using the big brush to make this oval shape here. So all I did was. I took a little bit of paint on the brush. I just made the oval first. So I just went around like this, made my oval shape, and then I just filled it in. And it will be hard to see his body at the bottom right now, but we're gonna fix that later. <laughs> Mary says Frosty has to put on weight. <laughs> That's funny. That's why I always give these free classes. Um, I always give free classes because if you don't like my this way I paint or my style, um, or it just, you know, not everybody clicks with everybody and that's okay. Um, then it just gives you a chance to know that you wouldn't want to pay for one. So I always host the free ones. I will always host free ones. Um, it doesn't matter, um, how many successful paid ones I have. I'll always host free ones because I want people to get a chance to know what they're getting into before they pay me for an event. So that's why... If for some odd reason tonight you are not enjoying tonight or you don't like the way I paint, there's no offense taken to that. There's like a million painters out there that paint online. So not everybody's going to resonate with how everyone does everything. So that is exactly why I host these um, so that you can kind of get a feel for my style and my personality. And um, yeah, so I've learned that along the way in life. Not everybody's always going to feel the vibes of everybody and that's 100% okay. I am okay with that. So now we're just going to move on to the head. <laughs> Shannon says, COVID frosty is fat. <laughs> Tell me about it. I can't even fit in my jeans. <sighs> So we're gonna work on his head. So as you can see here, his head is not completely round. It kind of comes up in a U shape. So we're just gonna connect it in that, that dome shape. We're not gonna worry about doing a complete circle. So what I'm gonna do here is on the edge, I'm still using this brush the same way that I did to make an outline with the bigger part of his body. I'm gonna do that with the smaller part. So I am going to just take on the skinny part here and kind of come up.
and just make a little dome shape there. So we don't have to make a complete circle. And then we're just going to fill that in. The scarf is what's going to make him look like his head. His head down here could be round. We don't know because the scarf's in the way. Um, but because we are not going to see it anyways, we don't have to worry about it too much right now. So we're just going to put his head on top there like that. <laughs> yes, a snow globe head, exactly. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, because I have that shape kind of done, I'm just still working on his body a bit, so I'm just going to come back in with some paint. Um, he's, I would say, about 80% dry. He doesn't have to be completely dry. What you're going to do is just press very lightly. If you take your brush and you dig in, you're going to take the layer of paint off and you're going to see the black behind. So I'm lightly, and how I do this is I'm not going at a 90 degree angle. I am going just softly on a 45 degree angle. And that's how you're going to see just gently kind of filling that in a bit more so it's a little bit darker, not so transparent. Still following the same shape of his body. And as you add that second layer here, you'll see, you can kind of see the difference between where his body is and where the snow is now. I don't know if you can see it online because the light's pretty bright, but you should see it there on yours. You can see the base there. If you feel like your paint is coming off a little bit, then either it needs to be a bit drier or you just need to press a little bit lighter. I'm just kind of feathering it on. Oh, Skylar, this is so fun. I want to cry. <laughs> we all could use a good cry sometimes. It's been a trying year, that's for sure. Okay, and we are going to do the same thing with the head. So just very lightly, just kind of filling a second layer in there just to darken them up a bit. Right now he just looks like a big blob, but he's gonna he's gonna come about. Okay, so when you're done doing that, we can wash our brush, our big brush out. Yes, Michelle, I'm painting on a, um, a multimedia pad. So it's an 11 by 14 Canson multimedia paper. It comes in 60 sheets and it's about 16 or $17 Canadian. If you're in the States, it'll probably be cheaper for you. Um... I love it. It's like my favorite book of all time. My accent is, I am from Ontario, Canada. Okay. So what we're going to do next is we are going to be drawing on um, the hat. We're going to do the hat and then we're going to do the leaves, the holly and the berries. Um, just let me know in the comments, give me some thumbs up if you guys are ready to move on and then I will keep going. Just want to make sure I'm not leaving anyone behind. If anybody is asking me any questions that I do not see, just feel free to private message me over the weekend. I will get back to you. 
I'm assuming there'll be quite a few. So if you don't hear from me right away, I will get back to you though. I always try to answer everyone's questions. I'm close to Detroit, Michigan, uh, Carrie. You don't have to blow dry the snowman yet. Um, we're going to be working on his hat in the holly. So acrylic dries pretty fast. It should dry by the time we have to worry about putting anything else on. Um, but if... If when we get there, if it's still wet, then we can blow dry it. Okay, a couple people need a few minutes still. So we're just going to wait another minute. If you guys have Christmas music on, I don't know. I can't have music on because Facebook won't show this then. Um, it would be a silent tutorial <laughs> and that would not be good. So <laughs> um, if you have Christmas music on and you're done, go do a little dance for me. <laughs> um... Enjoy your night while you're waiting. If I had music on, I'd be dancing right now for sure. Uh, to do the outside of the hat, we are still gonna be working with white. So we are gonna completely draw it out first with our paintbrush and then we're gonna color it in. Facebook won't show it because it's co considered copywriting music. Um, I'm not really sure. To me, I don't know. I always thought it would be like the artist would like to have their music out there in the world, but I guess it's considered me copywriting, I think, the music. I'm not sure. I'm not getting permission from the artist, so it's not allowed. Yeah, the quality of the paint will definitely determine how many coats it takes to cover the black. Uh, the Folk Art is pretty good paint. Um, that's why it only took me a couple. If you're using, um, let's say, Craft Smart, you're going to probably need three or four. So it definitely does um, make a difference. Um, I use the Cool to Warm setting. Virginia to blow dry. I don't use the really hot one, but I've used warm before and it was okay. Okay, so I'm going to move on um, and we're going to draw out the hat and the holly and all that fun stuff. So what we're going to do is have our detail brush here. That's going to be the next brush we're working with. So that's going to be that one there and we're still working with white. So what we're going to do is we're just going to work on, we're going to break this up into steps. Um, and we are going to work on just this little oval part here. That's going to be the only part we're working on. So we're going to put a little bit of paint on our brush here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to follow the shape of his head. So I'm just coming out a little bit and I'll move this closer after so you can see. And I'm just basically following the shape of his head for the brim of the hat. So that's all I did so far. And then we are going to make the outside shape of his hat. So what I did was I just start on the side here a little bit up and I'm just kind of kind of arc in a bit and come out. So just like that. And then I'm going to bring it across. To 
And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, but opposite. So I'm gonna arc it in again. And then we're gonna have the top of his hat there. Yes, if your paint is drying too fast, you can put the very tip of your paintbrush in the water um, and then uh, that would help. That will help a lot. You can even add a tiny bit. If you have a thicker paint, you can even add a tiny bit of water to it. Um, just not too much though, just a little tiny bit. If for some reason your video isn't working, you can try to go out and come back in. Just refresh your page and that should help. That should help. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw our little berries here on the side. And we're just gonna do three little circles. So just one here, one here. And these don't have to be perfect. This is just the outline to begin. And I'm gonna put one here, like that. And then we can take and we're gonna draw the shape of our leaves. So for this, we're kind of doing almost the same thing we did with the hat. Um, we're making a starting point and kind of arcing out. Um, so what we'll do is I'm gonna do one from this distance and then I'll bring it in closer to show you the second one. But we're just gonna take a starting point. So I'm gonna just go by this berry here and I'm just gonna kind of arc in and come out. And then we're gonna do it again. make a point here and come back out like this so it'll look like that there and then I'll show you how I did that so we can just come from here and we're just gonna do a little arc like that and then another one then bring it back the opposite way. And just like that. Oops. <laughs> and then I dunked my finger in it and ruined the side of my painting. Don't do that. That is not part of the tutorial. <laughs> So what I'll do is I'm going to go over again all my steps I just did. That way, if you're not completely finished yet, you can kind of catch up where you um, left off here. So uh, the very first step was just taking and following the shape of his head. So that's just going to be the rim of the hat. So I basically just went and followed the shape there all the way around. And then I did this part. So just kind of went up in an arc, straight across and back down in an arc. And you can do it different ways. I, I made my ends pretty pointy. You could kind of round your hat if you wanted to. You could even put a dip at the top. But that's just the basic structure of it. And then I just drew the little berries here, just three little circles. And then just the holly, the same way I did the hat. So just kind of arcing and then arcing again to a point. Just kind of swooping and swooping and making those lines.
Okay, so what we're going to work on now, now when you have reds um, on top of black, it's not going to really pop out. What you need to do is uh, put white first. So we can leave the hat um, where the gray is going to be exactly like it is. The gray will show over top because it's light enough. Um, but for some reason, red, the red hue just doesn't go with black very well. So um, we're going to take our small flathead brush. Chris, where are his arms? <laughs> he hasn't tucked away tonight. <laughs> he doesn't have any arms. You can give him some arms if you want. Okay, so we're going to take this brush here and we're just going to put some paint on it just a little bit. And we're going to make this band right here. So we're going to make it white first. So we're just going to just pick... Um, like from where that round part goes a little bit up and we're just going to arc it to kind of match that same shape there and we're just going to paint it white because this is going to be red but or whatever color you want to make it but red is not going to show on the black very nicely so we're just going to take and kind of have this come out a little bit here just paint that white there I don't have gray either. We're just going to mix black and white together to make the gray. So you don't have to worry about having gray. And then I'm just going to take and fill in my holly here with white as well. That way our green will pop when we put it on top. So we're just going to fill in our hollies. And we can leave a little line right where our hollies meet our, leaf, our berries. So see how right where the berries meet the leaves, I have just a little bit of black showing. You can leave that so you don't lose your initial uh, st like stenciled out part. You want to be able to see the shape of everything still. So wherever anything's connecting, I just leave a tiny little line. And then same with my berries. I'm just going to fill them in here. You can leave, like I said, just a little bit of black. When we go over this with red, where you see black, it'll just look like a little sh shadowing on the red. It'll come out a little bit of a different color, which is kind of cool. So you'll see here as I color them in, you can still clearly see the shape of everything. If you have gray, you can use gray if you already have it pre-mixed. Um, that's no problem. Dog took his arms. <laughs> I know my dog would, that's for sure. He's a stick lover. He'll chew all the sticks up. We have little pieces of sticks all over our yard. But he's a beagle, so he's a hunter.
So while we still have white and black on our plates, if you want to take and move a little bit of white over, or if you want to just put a new uh, glob of white on your plate, you can do that. We are going to just mix a little bit of gray. Um, besides the fact that the hat is gray, there is the shadowing in his face and body. So start with your white. Just add a little bit of gray at a time until you get a color you like. I'd say this is a pretty light to medium gray. So I'm just going to do that now. I'm just going to move a little bit over. And I'm literally just taking a little corner here and I'm just going to mix it in. And we're just going to kind of reserve that for when we're ready to shade. So what we're going to do next is we're going to move on just to shading the body. So the easiest way to do that is to have your gray mixed um, on the side here and then to still have some white reserved over here because we're going to kind of be going back and forth between the two um, just to get the blending properly. So what we're going to do is just take a little bit of gray on here. And we're going to outline um, the one side. So I'm going to start with the body here. And I'm just going to come and just bring a little swoop of a gray in here. Just like that. And I'm going to take all the excess gray off just on my napkin here. You don't have to wash your brush. Just kind of take all that excess off. And you're going to go right into the white that you have on your plate. And right on the edge where um, it kind of looks like a hard edge there, you're just going to go over back and forth in white. And you're going to see it's going to blend it in there. So we're just grabbing more white. And we're just going to blend it in. You can go in with a little bit more gray if you feel like you covered it up too much. Just kind of go back and forth until you're happy with how it's blending. And I just keep move, going back and forth with my brush and that's how you're going to get that blended look. Just make sure you don't have too much on your, on your brush or um, the blending won't happen. It'll kind of just take, the gray's going to take over. So just keep kind of taking that excess off your brush. And this is also where we're going to be able to start to differentiate the head from the body. And then we're going to do the same thing with the face. So for the face, I kind of went on the side and just kind of followed the shape of the body here. So just kind of coming up a little bit. So just on the side here, I'm just kind of following that shape. And then once again, I wipe the excess off my brush. I go back in with the white. And I just kind of go over my hard edges here, just back and forth. And I'm not pressing hard, I'm just lightly pressing. And you'll see that we kind of have that shading in there now. Yes, there's going to be a replay. Um, as soon as I'm done the video, I'm going to post it on my page and there'll be a replay.
You'll be able to find it uh, under videos. Um, yes, uh, Johnny, you can do it tomorrow night. Just go to my page under videos and you'll be able to find it there. Okay, so while we have that gray there, I'm just going to take and I'm going to paint in his hat. So just paint in this top part here. And I'm using my, still my small flat brush for this. And I'm just going to add a touch more gray, or sorry, a touch more black to that white just to make it a little bit darker. I feel like it's a little bit too light. Just a little bit darker here. So all we did was we worked on just our shading in here and then we're just painting the hat gray. I'll give everyone a minute just to catch up on that.
Okay, so what we're gonna move on to is um, we are gonna do just this section of his scarf right here. So just this little section. So we're gonna have our detailed brush with white paint because that part is landing on black still. So we need to take care of that before we paint it uh, red. So I'm just gonna grab out this brush here with the white and we're just gonna draw that part out. So it's really just coming right where the head is meeting the body. We're just gonna bring a line up like this. Don't worry about it going over your trees. I'll move this a little closer so you can see. So just a little line up here like that. And then another one just down here, kind of coming up. And we can kind of just paint white. Just kind of flick your brush out like this, just to kind of fill that in. So once we paint it red and we put in our black and white accents, it's going to stick out a lot more. But for right now, our only goal is just to get that white background in there so then when we paint it red, it pops out. Yep, I can show it again, that's no problem. So all I really did was I just took my small brush and I just, where the head meets the body, I just came out just like that and then I moved down a little bit, did it again, and then I just kind of flick out and just kind of fill it in. It's just rough right now. I don't leave my paintbrushes in the water too long. I just kind of rinse them off and then I dry them. Um, if you leave your paintbrushes in the water too long, they will start to kind of curve like this on the ends. And then uh, it slowly ruins them if you leave them in too long. Sometimes though my kids interrupt me and then I forget <laughs> and then they end up getting all curved, but. Okay, so we're gonna move on. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw the uh, the shape of the scarf. So I'm still using this pointed brush here and black. So you're just gonna take your black on your plate with that pointed brush. And we're just gonna draw the outline of the scarf. So as you'll see right here, it just kind of goes across the face and it's not 100% straight. So I'm just gonna draw kind of a little squiggly line across like that. And then same with down here, just another little squiggly line. And then we're just going to build this part of the scarf here. I'm just kind of doing a U shape, upside down U. And then just kind of coming off on the ends here. And I just leave that open. We'll add an accent to it after it's painted red.
Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're just gonna paint everything in red that needs to be red. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna paint this section in here, our little berries, and then we can go ahead and paint our scarf. Just make sure that by the time you get to your scarf, your black is dry or it'll kind of just get smeared in. Um, you could always give it a quick blow dry. So we're just gonna put red on our plates. And I'm still going to use this brush here. If you find like this is too big for your the berries, then you can always move to the detail brush. But I'm just going to start with this first here. And you don't have to worry about your lines right now. We're going to go over with black and kind of make it pop. <clears throat> And I'm just going to quickly blow dry my black scarf just so that I don't smear the red into it. I'm just going to go ahead and paint that in red. And I'm still just using my small flathead brush. I like using this one because I can use it the two different ways. So if I get too close to my edge, I just move it the skinny way. And then when I have a lot of space to paint, I paint with it the flat bigger way. My scarf and my hat are, they are red. I don't know if it's coming across as orange in the camera, but it is red. And as I do this, I'm just, I'm just painting to the ends, but I'm not leaving a straight line because there's going to be tassels at the end anyways. So you'll see here. As I paint this here, it's not, they're kind of rigidy. They're not all straight. And I'm just giving it a quick little second coat here. If your paint's thick enough, then you don't have to. This one's a little bit of a thinner brand. Jeffrey says, thank you. I thought it was orange too, or maybe because I have another glass of wine.
You just guys don't have to worry about anybody hurting my feelings. <laughs> I'm not easily offended, trust me. No worries. No, I'm not done yet, honey. I'm not done yet, okay? Okay, go, you can go around and get it. Go ahead. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to go and put some of that green on our plates. So we're still sticking with our small flathead brush and we just have the green there. And we're just gonna paint in our hollies. Yep, the replay will be done if you um, can't finish tonight. We'll be done in about 10-15 minutes, so if there's anybody who's wondering. Usually the videos run two to two and a half hours, depending on what it is. So right now we are just painting in our leaves green. That's all we did. So we just painted in everything that was red and now we're just doing the green leaves. I'm just kind of putting in just a little bit of a second layer there for that green. Just to darken it a little bit. So once you're done doing that, you can just um, put a little bit of the orange on your plate and we're just going to make the shape of his nose. And then really all that's left is just adding all the characteristics. So we're just going to go through and add a little bit of character, put um, the eyes and the buttons on and then we'll be um, finished. A little bit of snow and we'll be all done. So I'm still just using my pointy brush here with the orange. And we're just going to do a little triangular, triangular shape here for his nose. I'm 
and just color it in there. And if you don't have orange, you can just mix uh, red and yellow if you have those two colors. We're almost done. So if anybody's falling behind, I am going to repost the video right away. So if you're still just getting your red and greens going, um, just keep doing that. And then the video is going to end very shortly and you can just go back and just catch up from the end. So don't feel rushed or anything like that. Bring it a little closer for you there. So we're going to just do our finishing touches. So if you have your detailed brush, the rest will be done with this. And we're just going to go in with our black and we'll work on um, his face first. So we're just going to give him two little round eyes here. And then we can do the same thing for his mouth. So and you can really do his mouth any shape you want. We'll come down and do his buttons. So I just did little, little messy triangles. Sorry about people just writing rude comments. Um, I think I banned the one guy. I don't know. I don't know if it's working, but I'm just going to continue on. Just ignore it. <laughs> Alrighty. So now we're just going to work on making the cute accents in the hat and stuff. So what I like to do is I don't outline completely on the outside of anything. I move in just a little bit to do the outlining. So where the edge is here, I just would come in a little bit and leave that accent there. Same with across here. It'll just be a little bit lower. And then same with there. Just 
So everywhere you go, you can just, just go in a little bit. It kind of gives the shape of the outline, but because we have a black background, we don't want it right on the edge or we won't really see it. Yes, we have enough hate in the world and struggle right now with COVID. We don't need to add to it. I always think that when I watch like shows like The Walking Dead, it's like, you already have the zombies against you. Why are you trying to kill each other? <laughs> that is enough. We don't need to have uh, hatred on top of hatred, that's for sure. Um, okay, so same with the hollies here. So I'm just going to follow the outline that I did, but I'm not going to do it right on the outside. So you'll see when I move it closer. Everything's just kind of in a little bit. Yeah, I'm sorry if you have kids watching um, and they're saying rude things. I'm very sorry about that. I tried to ban them. I think I banned them. I, I believe I did. Um, I always do kid-friendly paintings, so it's sad someone would come in and try to ruin that. And then same with the scarf. I'm just going to kind of give it some accent here on the outside and then where the tassels would be. I'm just kind of throwing that black in there too. And then same with the ends here. So just kind of throwing little ends in there. A little bit of lines through the scarf here. This adds a little bit of character. All these things just kind of add to it. And then same with actually around the snowman. So I'm not going to draw a solid line around him. I'm going to have it broken up. So just a little one there. And then because the snow meets, uh, we want to be able to see it. So I'm just going to draw a little black line down here. Like it's kind of going around, but it's not too obvious. And same with here. So you kind of get an idea for the shape of him there. And same with on his face. Just a little line there. A little line there. I'm gonna just trace in his nose there and give him some lines up top. And once that's done, we can do the same with the white. Kind of just come in and leave little accents here and there. There's really no right or wrong for this. You're just leaving little, little marks to kind of show the shape, accentuate the shape. So around the holly, because it's black um, with the black lines, going around in white kind of makes them pop out. Same within the scarf here, just a couple squiggly lines. A 
And a couple little dots in here on the buttons and the eyes. And then just our snowflakes as well. So I did a couple bigger ones here, just crossing them, just crossing your lines. And then just dots. You can even use the end of your brush if you wanted to, to do dots, or you can use a skinny brush and just make little ones. And then last but not least, you just put your initials at the bottom or you can sign it and just be proud of your work and the fun you had tonight. You took time out to do something for yourself and that's what's most important. So I'll leave that up for a couple minutes there just so you can see. Um, and then I'll show you my next event here that's gonna be happening. So I showed you the one that's happening on Sunday. find it here. So this one is going to be my next event. This one's called Footprints in the Snow. Um, this one is $10 to get in. You get lifetime access and this is $10 per household like I said earlier. So you can invite friends over as many times as you want and paint it again. Um, what I'll do is when the video is done I'll just leave the link at the top in the description. So if you do uh, are, are interested and you want to kind of just check out the registration, um, you can just click the link in, in the title and it will bring you to the registration so you can see what it's all about. But this one will be um, not next week, but the week after. You know what, I can put it in the comments too and I'll pin it here. Okay, so I just put the event in the comments. I pinned it to the top. So it should be one of the first comments you see. And then when I go back in, I will also put this event um, in the title just so you can find it easier. But I'm going to replay this video in case anybody's a little bit behind. You can go back in and uh, finish up. But I just want to say thank you to everybody for joining me tonight. Um, I had a blast and I just appreciate everybody for showing up. The, I'm always overwhelmed by how many people come out here and paint with me. So thank you so much. Um, I apologize for any rude comments that were going on. I can't really watch everything while I paint, but just ignore them. If anything, their comments brought me more viewers because Facebook lets you see, uh, be seen more when there's more comments. So if we want to pick a positive out of this, more painters can now see me and come and enjoy uh, doing these nights with me. So thank you, rude people. You've helped me out. And um, I will talk to you guys later. And like I said, this Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern, uh, me and my daughter will be on painting uh, that turkey. So feel free to join us. Grab your kids or your grandkids. And have a great night, everybody, and enjoy your weekend.